Hi, this is Pastor Jim coming to you with words of hope and encouragement. We are recording this video on Tuesday, February the 2nd, Groundhog Day. Uh, this morning in Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania, as part of a ritual dating back to 1887, members of the Groundhog Club brought out from his den the furry little groundhog known as Punxsutawney Phil, who then saw his shadow, which according to legend is signed that there will be six more weeks of winter. Now, the reason that it brings me joy to talk about that is it brings back uh, pleasant memories of a trip that I took back in February of 1993 with Pastor Tom Shelton, former senior pastor here at Friedberg. He is now retired and serving as a bishop of the Moravian Church. Well, Tom and I, we, we didn't go to Pennsylvania. We didn't go to the Groundhog Festival. We were actually on a ministry-related trip to Northeast Virginia. But we had a free night when we first got there. So after supper, we went to see the movie Groundhog Day, which was brand new back then. Uh, it was starring uh, Bill Murray, Andy McDowell. I've got to actually have a copy of the movie here. Uh, Bill Murray plays a weatherman in today's lingo, a meteorologist. Uh, named Phil Connor, who is stuck again for another year going to cover the uh, Groundhog Festival in Punxsutawney. Now, Annie McDowell, uh, the actress, she plays his producer along with a cameraman who goes with Phil for the event. And in a twist of fate, Phil Connor is stuck repeating the same day, Groundhog Day, over and over and over again. Now, it is one of my all-time favorite comedies. There are some truly hilarious scenes, some, some moving kind of emotional scenes as well, but really there, there is a powerful message that is in it too, because it's only when Phil, the weatherman, breaks free from his selfishness, um, his arrogance and his pride and focuses his time, the time that he had, selflessly serving others that he set free to move forward in life. So I remember seeing the movie. At the time, there was a real connection to Scripture for me, uh, thinking about King Solomon and the words that he wrote in the book of Ecclesiastes. Uh, he, being a king, among the wealthiest and wisest of kings, struggled to find meaning in his life. And Ecclesiastes ends with these words of wisdom. Now all has been heard. Here is the conclusion of the matter. Fear God and keep His commandments, for this is the duty of all people. For God will bring every deed into judgment, including, including every hidden thing, whether it is good or evil. And, and that's just a reminder that uh, the time that we have in life, we are to use doing good, and we as God's people are to use uh, in ways that honor God. And I would say to you, if... And, and, and this might really be the case for a lot of people during all of this pandemic. Um, if you're someone who feels stuck in place in life or maybe struggling to find hope and meaning in what seems to be kind of having to do the same things over and over and over again, I highly recommend that you see this movie. Or if you just want to see a good romantic comedy and laugh, maybe cry a little too, and then learn along the way, I hope that you will see it. It's a really, really good movie. Now, it, it also makes me think of this candle because in a sense, think about this little, uh, this little friend of ours, an old Moravian candle. I found it uh, in my office, uh, stuck back in a closet in a box. It had gone unused. I'm estimating this candle's probably 40, 50 years old maybe a little bit older than that, certainly dates back to uh, the old sanctuary here. Um, and it was just stuck away. But now uh, it is giving meaning. And in a sense, if you want to personify the candle, it is uh, finding meaning in its true purpose, shining brightly here in our sanctuary in recent services of worship and in these videos that we've been doing, giving glory to Jesus, the one who is the light of the world. Well, I want to share with you some good news concerning uh, back problems that I've been struggling with for a long, long time. Many of you are aware of that and been praying for me. And as you know, I've been dealing with it since last summer. 
Um, it got exponentially worse when I fell up in the balcony here uh, back in early October. I've gone through injections in my back a couple times, and, uh, but they've not had lasting benefit for me. So I talked to my doctor a couple weeks ago about having surgery. I had no idea when I might be able to get on the schedule for the surgery, but really through divine intervention and in answer to the prayers of many of you who have been praying about this in recent days, and certainly through the kindness of a lady in the doctor's office, uh, the scheduler there, uh, who uh, was able to work and get the schedule uh, for month, get me on the schedule for Monday, February the 8th. Now I thought that was great, but then this morning she called back and said something had opened up and that I would be able to have the surgery this Friday, February the 5th, so just three days from now. So I'm looking forward to having this outpatient surgery and I do ask for your prayers for 100% success, for a quick and complete recovery. And of course, I'll miss being part of the worship service this Sunday. In fact, knowing it was outpatient, when she called this morning, I was asking her if, if she thought I'd be able to, to preach on Sunday. And she said, what? And uh, I said, well, you know, preach, I'm a pastor. She said, you mean, you mean get up behind a pulpit and you know, stand up for 30 minutes or so and preach? And I said, yeah. She goes, uh, no, no, you're, you're not going to be able to do that. So anyway, I'm not sure how long the recovery will take, but it is my plan to be back next week to do the video here. And I'm very much looking forward to being in worship with you on February the 14th, which is Valentine's Day. So um, the February edition of the church newsletter, uh, the Friedberg Folio, is now available some of you may have already received notice of that on the Friedberg Friends email that was sent out. If not, you should be able to access the newsletter on our church website, which is friedberg.church. Uh, um, I hope if you read that, when you read it, the front page article there is one I wrote about praying for and not praying on, sort of a play on the two different words, not praying on the president. I put a request there and an invitation for you to, uh, to pray for our newly inaugurated President of the United States. And then to go online and explore the nonpartisan uh, website of the nonpartisan organization of the Presidential Prayer Team. And that's Presidential Prayer Team, just all run together, presidentialprayerteam.org. Now I have been a member of that since 2001, and I have a little coin that I meant to bring to show you of George Washington uh, kneeling and praying at Valley Forge. Uh, those who were charter members, we had an opportunity to get those. But it, it's not a big deal about me being in it that long, other than to say this. Um, I have prayed for President George Bush during his terms in office, uh, his eight years there. Prayed for Barack Obama during his two terms in office. Prayed for Pe President Trump during his term that he served in office. And now it is certainly my intent and the intent of others who are part of the presidential uh, prayer team to pray for President Biden as well. Now, as I say in the article, look, you do not have to agree with President Biden with his policies or to favor the positions taken by members of his administration. Now, he's only been in office a few days, and as I say in the newsletter, I already don't agree with some of those things that, that he's enacted. Um, but uh, that's not the point. Uh, the point is to uh, pray for the president. As many of you did, I sometimes didn't like the things President Trump tweeted out either. I thought he got himself in a lot of trouble doing that. But the issue is, are we going to fulfill what the Apostle Paul gives to us as an urgent request in Scripture? In 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 to 4, the Apostle writes, I urge then, first of all, that petitions, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings and all those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. This is good and pleases God our Savior, who wants all people to be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth. Our call is to pray first, asking God to help 
create an environment in which we can live peaceful and godly lives. And, and to create an environment in which the good news of Jesus and His saving love, His saving truth can flourish and spread. There can and should be times when people of faith speak out against the plans and policies of those in power. As Christian citizens of the United States, that's part of our responsibility as godly people, as Christian citizens of the nation. But, but know this, our words of opposition, what, what, what is often referred to as speaking truth to power, it's going to have much more credibility, it'll have much more divine inspiration and more divine influence if we have first prayed and sought the counsel and blessing of God, both for ourselves and for those who govern over us. And I think this is a really good lead-in to today's reading from the Daily Text. And if you're not familiar, the Daily Text, the daily devotional book that's used by folks around the world. And I'll be reading from today, which is February the 2nd, uh, Groundhog Day. And the first reading comes from Isaiah chapter 55, verse 11. My word shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. And the hymn verse, The Lord Almighty spoke the word, the morning stars together sang, the word He spoke through chaos broke, the worlds in order sprang. And then from the book of the Acts of the Apostles in the New Testament, uh, Acts chapter 4, verses 29 to 30, Enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness, Stretch out your hand to heal and perform signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. And the hymn verse, By faith your word has made us bold to seize the gift of love retold and all that you are we here receive and all that we are to you we give. And let us pray. Great God, accomplish your purpose in us. Strengthen the prophetic voice in each of us that we may speak boldly for you. Make us proclaimers of your name and workers of your will. Amen. Brothers and sisters, remember always, we are blessed to be a blessing. So in all that you think, all that you say, and all that you do, seek to be a blessing in Jesus' name. Amen.